What is going on? Welcome to another episode of Knights at the Round Table. And we have a familiar face today. We got a familiar face today in one of these little boxes. I know you guys know Arby. You guys know Austin. But then there's a stranger in here. Mr. Sir Ryan Beck is here today. Ryan, say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. You know what it feels like? It feels like when like some very old comedian would come back on The Tonight Show. <laughs> Years uh <laughs> Years after their prime, I was gonna. I was actually. After. I was gonna give you the great Susan Wallman. Ro Roger Clemens is back. Oh, God. <laughs> oh my goodness! Look in the box. <laughs> and and then I said, Jay, I said, my wife, where'd you put my banana? And then everyone has to laugh way too hard because they're gonna die in a week. <laughs> oh man, you're crazy. You're crazy. We'll be right back with Bob Newhart, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So, Austin, how you doing? RB, doing well? Doing yeah, great. How are you? Everybody's doing good. Yeah, so half of the season is done. We survived. We survived a really bad first half for the Yankees. And it's funny because the I don't want to I don't want to talk too much about the last game of the season, but it kind of summed up the Yankees year so far, didn't it? Yes, it does. I mean, it just it another just, heartbreaking. Another another heartbreaker. Um, God, I don't even want to. I don't even want to harp on that one that much. But uh, but man, where where was Chapman at? But anyway, anyway, whatever. I went <laughs> I went to dinner in the middle of the night. We won, right? Oh no, we lost. <laughs> we lost. Oh oh man, that changes everything. Yeah. Let me I throw out my no Let me throw out my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Give him ten. Give him ten to get some new notes going. <laughs> Got to get you updated on that one, man. It was a what a what a game. All right. Anyway, Hang on, um, let me let me let me quickly Google search stats for our favorite Yankee, Mike Talkman. Yes. Mike <laughs> <laughs> You'll see the Bay Area. What? San Francisco? What happened? But have you seen you Wandy? Have a mustache? Have you seen <laughs> Wandy? That's the question. Have you seen He's Wandy hard to miss. He is hard to miss. He's hard to miss. So, folks, the New York Yankees. Um, what are the anybody really quickly? What's the first half record? 46 and 40? 46, 43. 46 and 43? I believe so. Uh, yep, 46 I like, and 43. I feel like that's something I should, have, I should have obviously been on. But, yeah, 46 and 43. Three games over. We're still in fourth. Yep. Still in fourth place. Wandy Got a chance. Peralta is built like a construction worker that holds the stop <laughs> sign. <laughs> is, is that is that what you see when you seen him? So is that what you? Yeah, that, that would have been your response to Brian Cash. Have you seen Wandy Probably yes, he's built like the construction guy. Nice. Yeah, the one, who, not one who actually does work. The guy who just holds the stop sign and <laughs> swings it around so it says either stop or slow. <laughs> oh man, good old Wandy. Here's here's Wandy. There he is. Yep, he just throws that thing around a little bit. That's it for Wandy. <laughs> Um, but the Yankees, um, so just picking up briefly, we got a lot of things to go over today. Um, uh, we will talk about the half, uh, the first half of the season a little bit and, and who needs to step up. We will talk about some possible rule changes for baseball. Um, obviously the Gallup rumor, um, that is, that is obviously out there. I reported on that a little today, a little bit on the draft and we're going to actually start at the draft. So on the screen here, I'm going to throw it up. Here is the top four picks the Yankees made. And we'll get some feedback from the guys on here. And obviously, you guys in the chat, go ahead and talk all you want about um, the draft and everything else. And also, too, guys, I didn't mention this. Please go ahead and share and like this video as much as you can on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're doing that at. So the Yankees in the first round selected Trey Sweeney, a shortstop. In the second round, they got Brandon Beck, related to Ryan Beck, by the way. <laughs> and It's my dad. It's his father. <laughs> And in the third round, they got Brock Selvage, who I'm going to actually talk, talk about a little bit here. And in the fourth round, see, this is just the top four picks. They got Cooper Bowman, who they've already signed out of Louisville, um, a second baseman. Um, anybody have any thoughts on the first round pick being Sweeney, uh, left-handed hitting uh, shortstop for the Yanks? Any thoughts on that? 
Well, um, the little that I know about Sweeney is that they're very high on him, like a lot of scouts and stuff. Like, he's a pure contact hitter. I thought that they was going to move him from shortstop and put him in second or third. But I, I believe a report came out that they're, they're – um, they drafted him to be a shortstop. Like yeah, that's they, his position. Damon Oppenheimer said that, but I don't bl- I don't listen to much that Damon Oppenheimer says to be honest. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so and based on everybody else, they're saying they're uh, they're very high on him as well. So I guess it's a good pick for the Yankees. Yeah, the um, per my understanding too, the lefty bat is legit. So the bat is real. Um, and, and apparently, um, his work ethic is excellent. Also, um. So we'll see. I think I think what the Yankees were looking to do there is a, is really a safe pick, right? Yeah. Um, because it, it's hard to – you don't necessarily always win in drafts. We've seen late-round picks do amazingly well and, and first-round picks flame out. But um, I'm not upset with it, to be honest. I thought they were going to go more in the pitching market, um, but they get the, who they feel was the best bat at the time. So, so that makes sense for them. Um, Brandon Beck is a god in the OFM. Did anybody else have anything to say on Sweeney at all? I think the Yankees do not have a lot of faith in Glaber Torres in the future. Oh, that was my takeaway. Oh, well, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. He gone. You guys might not be. Well, we'll might we'll, not be soon. But he no, gone. Eventually. Yeah, we'll we'll get to we'll definitely we'll definitely get to that. And it's I'm actually surprised to hear all of you say he's definitely gone. Is that a? Ch- I mean, I know you, we all we've all kind of said that before. Ryan, you feel the same way? Yeah. Really? Um, unless he mm-hmm. somehow miraculously turns it on, or if they move Voight and give him one more crack at second, I, uh, I think that's his only shot. L.I. Yankee King is having a panic attack right now that was saying that. <laughs> <laughs> About Glaber. But, um, um, but with, with Trey Sweeney, and, and I hate to do, do comps because I don't like putting this on people, but anyone else get kind of a Corey Seager vibe? Yeah. A really tall yeah. shortstop that yeah. maybe it shouldn't play there, but Sears obviously not bad. He's gonna get paid big this offseason, maybe yeah. by the Yanks. Who knows? But uh I think- a big left handed uh I don't know if, uh, much about how much pop he has. He's powerful. They, is he okay? Yeah. So he's the, powerful. the then the profile seems to, to fit pretty well. Yeah, he's um everything I hear about him is good on the on the bat side. Um most I mean, and this is not just me. This is even from draft night um, when they talked about him. A lot of people don't expect them to stay at short. But again, you know, like you just said, there, there's your shortstops who are taller and have a bigger frame and can still get the job done there. Um, but that's something I heard a lot about him. The one I'm actually really interested in is um, Brandon Beck is, is an interesting guy. Um, and I know you guys, like Arby, you mentioned about uh, Damon Oppenheimer talking about a few different things today. One of the things he brought up today is that Brandon Beck isn't far from the major leagues already. And knowing the Yankees, somebody said, yeah, 2025 he'll be up then. <laughs> knowing the Yankees. But <laughs> but basically um, what it is about him, and I actually sent a couple of texts out and got one back that said, don't listen to the people that are saying this kid doesn't have a fastball. He doesn't choose to have a fastball like that. He can throw 95, 96. He'll dial it back. I saw one highlight of him. Where guys, I I think it was I guess one of the I don't I forget who they were playing. I think they were playing Texas that one game when he was like we're wearing black today because of we're going to a funeral. It's gonna be their funeral, um, which I absolutely. Oh, love, that was him who said that. that was yeah, him? he said that. He said that. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, he was Bring the one up, that said we're gonna up. we're wearing black today because it's gonna be their funeral. So so we're, it doesn't matter how hot it is, we're gonna wear it. And he <laughs> dialed back that game on a couple of two strike pitches in ninety six, ninety seven even. So he got it in his repertoire. The thing is, he really relies on control. He's very, very good with control. And um, that's where he, where his bread and butter is. And, you know, knowing the Yankees, there's not a lot of confidence in how well they'll get somebody up here. But my understanding is they don't feel this guy is truly far off at all. So that's really, really interesting to see how that pans out. I mean, we heard that with Jacob Lindgren how many years ago, too, so. We did, I know there were some injuries. I was there. gonna say, yeah, he also had a lot of injury stuff going on that that stopped him. But um, uh, Beck looks like he's a guy. My understanding is he got four average pitches and four plus potentially. Um, they feel he's more of a top line starter. I've heard more of a back end guy. So I mean, we'll, we'll see where it goes. The the strange comparison to the ceiling for him is Bieber, which is pretty crazy. But I mean, that, that's map, the comp. Map Matt Blake was their pitching coordinator with Beaver, so maybe he can get it out of him. Yeah, maybe, or an- maybe another guy. I, another guy I thought of who maybe doesn't have an electric fastball, 
was uh, Corey Kluber. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Hey, if he falls anywhere between a Corey Kluber and an Adam Warren, I would be ecstatic. Oh hell yeah! Of course, <laughs> of course, no doubt about Which it. It sounds, it sounds like he could from the little bit that I know about him. Yeah, and I mean he's a second, like like we said, a second round pick. He's going, he's going to sign. You know, my understanding is all the top guys will sign. Um, who do Yankees feel is a steal that they got? Was pick number three, Brock Selvage, out of high school. Very big lefty. A lot of people feel he was actually one of the top five pitchers available. And the Yankees are able to get him. He has a commitment to LSU. But the Yankees believe they're going to sign this guy. And um, mid, they believe he'll end up having a mid-90s fastball. Right now, he's about 92, 93. They think that'll bump up the mid-90s, plus off-speed stuff already. Good build as a pitcher. Um, and then the last guy, Cooper. Um, they already signed Cooper Bowman. So he's already in the picture and in the fold. So that's that's the draft, and we don't have to get into much of those other picks. But um, Bowman's a guy who is a second baseman, right-handed, makes a lot of contact. They project maybe 15 to 20 homers. But um, overall, early on, it looks like it's a pretty decent draft for the Yankees. That sounds just like the last second base when they drafted out of Louisville. Yeah. Wasn't that uh, Nick Solak? Yes, Nick Solak, who's now doing pretty decent with Texas. I think he's actually having a pretty good year overall. I mean, it's Texas, so is anybody <laughs> having a good year? Beck, you got any thoughts on, on the draft, if you watched it at all? Yeah. Um, Aaron Boone said the whole thing was mean and bullying, <laughs> So I, and I agree with him. Yeah, how dare he you said, pick someone first? Everyone should get picked I, at the same time. I agree. <laughs> that, that's the way it goes, right? Um, mm -hmm. So – Let's look at one more thing from the draft, and um, I'll put this on the screen here. This is the great commissioner of baseball coming out. I made a video about this, but I just love it. Here he is, folks, <laughs> to the Boo Birds due to spoils uh, for our good friend Robbie Manfred, who gets evening, booed everyone. at the draft. And it's funny because he gives like a little smirk, but I, maybe that was a wake-up call for him about how bad of a job he's doing. Arby, what do you think? Listen, when I heard the booze, I was clapping. I stood up on my couch. <laughs> I clapped. And I booed as well along. That's what he deserves. And I'm glad they gave it to him. Right. Haven't you know didn't you notice he was stuttering as well while he was speaking? Yeah, he was uncomfortable. You could tell. You could tell by his Very face when it came out, he was uncomfortable. He didn't like it. He I don't think which is kind of surprising to me because you're like, you really you didn't expect that? <laughs> you didn't expect that to happen? But okay. Listen. I'm just glad they did that because he he's terrible. He need, he needs to go. He's terrible as a commissioner. Gone. Put it. Put. Do you think they? Do you think they'd feel? Do you think he'd feel more comfortable speaking if at the beginning of his speech there was a runner on second base? <laughs> <laughs> the, the team just puts their draft pick at second base first. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their last draft pick from last year starts at second base. <laughs> oh, man. Austin, what are your thoughts on uh, on good old man for getting booed? Then we'll jump into the possible rule changes that we might be happening. I mean, I don't know how I top what Ryan just said, but uh, I never thought there'd be a commissioner in sports that would make me actually kind of support Roger Goodell. Wow. Like that's, I, that's I never, be. never thought that was possible. Yeah. I man. have the, the barstool clown shirt over there with, with Goodell's face and the clown <laughs> nose on it. I, I feel like I need one with uh, Manfred's face on except to add the, the court jester's hat. Oh man. <laughs> Get a little Joker design going on him. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. He's, um he's something else, but this could be good. And I know you guys talked about it in our, in our chat that we do um about rule changes coming up. So I'll throw them on the screen. As you guys can see here, these are potential rule changes according to MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred, banning or limiting defensive shifts. I'm, I'm. Let's let's go one by one on these, banning or limiting defensive shifts. Ryan, what's your thought on that? Or you could hit the ball to the opposite field. Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, honestly, I, I kind of think you took the word out my mouth on that one. Um, let, let's get, let's get everybody's opinion first and we'll, then we'll just make that an, an, an open dialogue on that. Um, Austin, what do you think? I might be in the minority here. I hate the shift. Okay. I, I absolutely despise it. I just, 
you, you, you want to see, and I, I agree, you hit, hit the ball the other way. I get that. But you're saying that you want to see people put the ball in play and, and you want to see action on the field. How many hits did Mark Teixeira lose over his career because of that? And, and I, I get the argument. I agree. Why don't you just lay a bunt down the third baseline? Cano did it, I remember, clear as day in Boston once. And it rolled all the way into left field and hit the corner wall and he got a double. Right. It's not that hard to do. But I also don't want to see someone lay a bunt down when they're making twenty plus million dollars a year. I come to watch you drive the ball into the gap or drive the ball over the fence. Yeah. So I, I think I would be happy to see it go. Plus I just hate watching the Yankees get burned on the shift. <laughs> it, like I there's nothing that bothers me more than watching someone hit a ground ball right to where Glaber should be and it goes through for a base hit and a run scores. I mean, Glaber may not make the play anyway. Well, this is true. <laughs> okay. Okay, where Geo should be. All right, there we go. Uh, Arby, what is your thoughts on it? Um, I'm on the fence. I get what um, Austin and is saying about it. But for me, like it's part of the game. Like I remember me back in high school, we would always use the shift. And – Look like what Ryan was saying, just hit the ball opposite side. Like, these are major league players. you telling me these players don't know how to hit the opposite side? Like, the defense is sacrificing. If you hit it. They don't. On, uh, well, that's the problem in this game. They don't. That's, that's why like, Adam Frazier and DJ LeMahieu are hot commodities. That is true. Like, I understand that we want to see a pure offensive game. But then again, there has to be some, some type of defense. You know what I mean? Some strategizing defense. Like, so I'm on a fence of it, you know, but then again, I, I, I don't mind it because the defense on their ship, like Gio by himself, you know, on the left side. So but like, let's say, for example, Adam Fraser, a good hitter, gets to the opposite side. You know, we also, the defense is also sacrificing. It's not just a straight advantage for the offense. Right. So it's, so I'm on a fence of it, like, but banning it, I, I don't know about that. Like, I think, okay, sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. No, 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 you're good. I think it, it made more sense to me when, like, it first – I don't shouldn't say first came out, but, like, when it was just, okay, I'll, I'll shift for David Ortiz. I'll shift mm. for Mark Teixeira. Mm. Now I see teams shifting for Tyler Wade. <laughs> he doesn't hit the ball right. that hard to begin right. with, like, guys. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Right. You don't need to shift for Tyler Wade. It's like now you guys are just – now you're trying to be too smart. Uh, the, I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. anyone in this chat could probably strike Tyler Wade out if you give us a, oh, a yeah. month and a half to train. Like, come on. Like, I have another My thing is when it's a limit in the shift, like what? Once every three innings? That's what I was going to say. What What does that mean? What does limiting it mean? Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, because yeah. if, if you pull it up, I'll pull it up again here. Um, It says oh, I ban pull it up banning or limiting defensive shifts. So is it going to be something where they'll say you're entitled the to short stop, The what, shortstop can't position? go to the right of second base. That, that's so, like, he can say shift, but he can't. He can't. He can't cartoonishly go over there, right? Where, but guys, where the where the second baseman is in mid right field, and the third baseman is playing second base, and the shortstop is still at shortstop. Okay. Where they can still shift, but they, there's limits to it, I believe. And then on top of that, I mean, banning is to me that to me banning goes too far on something like that, because I do think there's times where, in big moments, your strategy. Uh, but but again, going back to Going back to what Austin said, you're right. You got guys, shifts are on everybody now. It's not like it's on your chosen few of the of the big boppers in the game. It's on everybody. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm also I'm also a little bit maybe, maybe now more than ever in that minority of a group that says that guys should be able to slap the ball the other way or hit with power the other way, like many people in the past have used to. And it's funny because this kind of goes back, if you guys listen to the to the podcast with me and Francis, we said that um, I, I was talking about the little TikTok thing that I saw about Jeter being the most overrated athlete of all time, not even player. And one of the comments, the guy was very smart. He, got, he said, the problem is these players play this way now because analytics is what gets them paid. So they look to be analytically sound more than anything else. They look to have a lower average and maybe hit for more power and, and things that uh, launch the ball a little more instead of smacking the ball to left field or right field. And that's kind of the way the game is played now. So 
I do think for the way the game is played now, it probably makes sense to limit it to a degree. I don't. I'm not for yeah. banning it. I think banning it's stupid. No. I think managers need to have some sort of say on the field on what their players exactly. do, and it's strategy, right? Is, isn't it still strategy? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I, wouldn't it be? God. Wouldn't it be great if they outlawed the shift and then Chris Davis became the greatest player in <laughs> baseball all of a sudden? <laughs> Like it's yeah. one thing to shift for Joey Gallo, but Tyler Wade, come on. The, the Houston yeah, the actually shift. shifted for him on, I think it was Friday night, whenever he started in left field. My shift for Tyler Wade when I would have all the infielders be 45 feet from home plate. <laughs> I'd have the They'll all be in front of the pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have the outfielders playing on the infield dirt. <laughs> the, good old, the good old waiter. What do they say? Dar- Darth Waiter. Poor Darth Waiter isn't getting no love. All right, so the next possible rule change is I think I, I got to I'm I'm 100 percent certain we're all gonna agree on this one. Elimination of seven inning doubleheaders. Please, finally. I mean, we're all good with that one, right? That that's an easy. That doesn't even need and, a discussion. And can we couple that with um, making Madison Bumgarner's no hitter an actual no hitter? Yeah, that's baloney. How that's not considered oh, a no hitter is wrong. It's not a rule. He didn't create the rule. It's a no. rule that Major League Baseball put out. He didn't do it. He pitched the game. You're, you're, He's showing up to the park with Major League Baseball saying today's going to be a seven-inning game unless it goes to extras. And now you're not going to count it? Yeah, that, that makes – how do you how you don't count that makes no sense to me at all. I don't understand it's ridiculous. that. Ridiculous. And then the fact that the people are, are, are agreeing with that, that it wasn't no hitter. I'm like, what? Oh, because it wasn't nine innings. They and, said and, that game was seven innings. That's it. I mean, it's seven just – And then threw a no hitter. And Tampa did it the other night too. I don't want to – be totally biased and throw them out. They did a oh, combined yeah. no hitter against Cleveland. Yeah, the the combined Third time they've been no you know, hitter. The, the, the combined no hitter never never has the same flair though. No, I agree with that. It uh, never has yeah. the same flair. Ma- Madison deserved it though, man. That, that's not right. I remember when it happened and they left it out and everything. I'm like, yeah, didn't Bumgarner throw a no hitter? And it was and mm-hmm. the re- first response to me was like, oh yeah, that was a seven in no hitter. So what? Like that was a game, wasn't it? Was he supposed no to like, oh yeah, let me give him a few hits because it's not going to count anyway. Yeah, makes no damn sense. People, people who think it shouldn't count strike me as like the Tim Kirkchen level of uh, baseball fans. Is like he play, still around? Got, yep. Yeah. I believe so. I think I Guys, saw him Monday night. Yeah, I was shocked when I saw him. I'm like, what? <laughs> Guys who can, guys who can like recite from memory box scores from 1906. <laughs> That's the type of guy who's outraged at instant replay. <laughs> and saying that it shouldn't, it should, there shouldn't be a no hitter after seven innings because it ruins the sanctity of baseball. <laughs> so just having Jim Joyce blow or Monda Galarraga's perfect game, but oh my god, that was terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. Bud Selig said no, it's not a perfect game. <laughs> we can't overrule it. <laughs> All right, so the next one is Ryan's favorite. Elimination of starting extra innings with a man on second base. The Manfred <laughs> rule, his all-time favorite thing in the planet. Uh, the runner on second base. I mean, you got to be kidding me, man. When when this thing came out, I was like, it's not going to happen. And then all of a sudden, boom, here it is. It's the stupidest damn thing. It's so dumb. It's dumb. That That's all, that's my only opinion on it. Get rid of the damn thing. Act like it never happened. The thing that bothers me is, why wait to 2022? Get rid of it now. Just dump it. Dump this stupid rule. Has everyone played the same number of games? Because that would be my only hang up on doing it now. Oh, probably not. No, that, probably that not. would be my only hang up on doing yeah. it now. I mean, I, I just don't get it. I, I really don't get the rule. I don't like it. I understand you want, you know, pace of play and all this stuff, but no. I, I don't want I don't want to see a guy just automatically get second. You give him a double too, why don't you? Whoever the player is, give him a double. Think about it. He gets second base for making an out. Yeah. The last inning. Yeah. And he gets a run tacked on to his box score. At the end. Like, leading the league in runs this year is going to be pointless. Right. Yeah. Absolutely pointless. I'm yeah. fine outlawing it as long as they also outlaw players trying to hit home runs in extra innings because that is infuriating. Oh, I really? hate a 47-inning thir- a <laughs> game. Because everyone is dropping their hands like it's slow pitch softball. 
Well, I even hate seeing it now. What there was one of the games with, with the Yankees where I, forgot, I think it was early in the year, one of their first ones, and they got a runner on second base. Hicks is up, and he's swinging for a homer. I'm like, yeah, what the course. damn ball? What are you doing? Well, is that all Hicks ball to the right away. side? Right. That's the only thing Hicks could basically do. Is that anyway? Yeah. Um, RB, are you on the same mindset as us oh. on this one? I think everybody really is. Oh yeah, I'm with you guys as well. The dumbest rule that I ever heard in my life. Because then, did, did he did he make that rule because to make the game faster? Yeah, you know yeah. everything with them now is well, a pace of play type thing. And I think for last year, part of it was because of COVID too. They didn't want the yeah. games to be super long, which I still hated the rule. But but my thing is, okay. is there a, is there a big difference in this season in time, like in pace of the game compared to regular? That's all I want to know. I haven't seen nothing on that. I think the the games that do go to extras are ending like in the 10th or 11th because you're not having like, like you're not having, let's say it's uh, Yankees Mets. You're not having the Yankees score and then the Mets score that goes from it's one team doesn't score or actually I think that happened exactly. So, but that's kind of what it is. And also like the, the, the the time frame, like uh, the length of the game, is it, is it still three hours, three and a half or two? It's probably right around three. Supposedly. Probably a little over three, like in the haulers. So it's not that much of a difference there. I no. It. Yeah, I, I doubt I'm it's that much. That. I doubt it's that much of a difference. Um, And then the last one, I love this one. I've been calling for this for a very long time, is uh possibly extend DH to the National League. I think that should have been happening for a long time already. Um, I think that makes the most sense in the world. You pay these pitchers a lot of money. Why have these guys bat? One, it to me is not enjoyable to see a pitcher bat, to be honest. It's not. And and two, they're getting paid a lot of money. So let them do their job, which is to pitch. And that's it. That's my takeaway on that one. You're creating more jobs for these players that are still free agents, like Edwin and Carson Young. Oh, 100%. Carson Young. Yep. No doubt about yeah. it. And it Nelson also, Cruz uh, could play till he's 50. Yeah. <laughs> for real, yeah. Albert, Albert Pujols. He might do it now. Albert Pujols. Yeah, there's, uh, a, there's it, a lot of guys. It, it, it'll extend a lot of guys out, which is only fair. It's only going to help the hitters get money. I mean, Mark Trumbo would probably have been in the league another five years. I didn't think about somebody like him. You're right. Uh, You're Mark right. Reynolds. Mark Reynolds, right. Right. Um, and not even that, and also making trades. <clears throat> like, like yeah. for, for oh, example, yeah. the popular name Stanton, you know, that keeps, or, bring, keeps coming up. That's like, like, like yeah, like yeah. I told you guys, that was the only way – when I was talking to um, to a few beat writers, they said that's the only way a trade would ever happen for a guy like Stanton is if the National League ever took it, um, took the DH yeah. to the National League. Also, if every GM in the National League all of a sudden had severe brain trauma. <laughs> <laughs> that would only help. That would help in, 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 in the process. Yeah. I also feel like maybe Freddie Freeman is not a great example, but he's the first, like, kind of over 30 free agent I thought of but you mean to tell me that if, if the NL had the DH he couldn't use that leverage of having 14 other teams because I'm sure the Braves will still be interested anyway they can't really lose their face you mean that the le- that leverage couldn't get him another year or two? Oh no uh, no doubt about it, it no doubt about it, it it would only help the MLB players get paid more money and you got to think. You got to think too. Um, if you're making a contract like that with a guy like a Freeman, for an example, and you know that maybe the last three years he could DH for you, I mean that makes you even more willing as an organization to say, yeah, we can exactly. we can work on something. So I think I know the baseball union will probably love it. I'm sure they had they've been wanting that for a while. Um, so those rule changes, I think I'm okay with just about all of them to be honest. Um, I think it's I think it's good to go. Again, I'll throw those on the screen and read those off. You guys in the comments, let us know what you think. Banning or limiting defensive shifts, we're pretty cool with that, except really banning it. Elimination of the seven inning double headers, elimination of starting extra innings with a man on second base. So stupid. They should wear like clown makeup when they're on second base. And then possibly extend the DH to the National League. So you, that is where we would, are there. Would you guys if there if there's another rule that you guys would like to add that's not on the list. What would it be? Oh, I have that's one. A good one. I, I did not. I did not prepare for that one. No. What is? What's the one you got, Arby? Good, yeah. Well, with me, I like the rule. Well, it, was, it came to my mind when I saw the All Star game when um micing the players up, having the having the player mic'd up. Like yeah. I don't know. If, 
the manager picks a player or I don't know how, how it will work. Like, I just find that cool. Like, it's in, you know, it's, it's, it's interactive. It, yeah, it, interactive. Make, it makes it a little more exciting to see guys like that. Yeah. Um, it's funny because um, uh, the the draft pick, Brandon Beck, is is he was mic'd up for one of the games. And I remember that's the first video that I put out just because of that, because it shows the personality of somebody a little bit. So Did you guys I, see the – oh, God. Go ahead. Yeah, like Freddie – Okay. Did you see the Freddie Freeman bit when uh, it was judges at bat? Yes. And uh, Judge got went to three zero, and he's like, "Oh man, I'm six foot five, but I'm about to look really small here." <laughs> yeah, I saw that. And then he missed with the three zero, and he's like, "Oh, here we go." Yeah, he had to tell Judge he was mic'd. They're like, "Make sure you tell him wherever you're mic'd up." You don't know what the man, yeah, anybody's be, gonna be, say. Be careful what you uh, what you're saying, Judge. I'm mic'd up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the rule I would add is if there's ever a scandal like with the Houston Astros again, there, nobody gets suspended. But Jose Altuve has to play every game wearing a pair of ice skates. <laughs> Shirtless, too. Shirtless. Yeah. Shirtless. Shirtless. <laughs> Imagine how long it would take him to run down the first baseline in a pair of ice skates. I, I was really glad to see that bad tattoo. I feel so bad for him. Is that his wife's name? I don't know what it said. I I don't know what it said on it. Um, but uh, it was this big. It was so it was small. Faded. It was it, it's faded it's as like well. right there. It's literally right here. You would come on now. Every, if if you like, look at the if you look at knew. the scale of a normal human being's height, it, it's literally a Jose Altuve size. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's such a joke that, you know, I talk to a lot of Astros fans. I got a lot of Astros fans that follow me. Um, and that we we chat a lot of baseball, but. I mean, when you saw that happen and he was so willing then to do it, it's kind of like, you guys know how stupid you look acting like it's funny to do right now? Yeah. Yep. Like, it looks so stupid that you're doing it now because then it automatically raises the question. It's almost like somebody, I'm trying to, to put it towards like shoplifting. You got caught shoplifting and then later you'd come back in like wearing the same clothes that everybody knew you shoplifted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's with like the price tag still with on. the price tag still on it from the exact store. Like, yeah, I came here and I shoplifted these, and I'm still wearing them. So what? It, it makes no it sense. Like, it, it would be like if when, you were hiding something. It would be like if when OJ got acquitted, he just went on the Tonight Show the next night wearing a bloody glove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's too late. Well, wasn't he going to write that book? If I did it, here's how. Yeah, I thought he did. Did he write it? I think he might be right. I think he did do it. Ah, he might have wrote it already. I mean, write the book, obviously. He was acquitted, so obviously he didn't do it. I think we can all agree. Right. Everyone on the screen you see. Yes, everyone on the screen you see agrees OJ didn't do it. Moving on. Yep, next next topic. (laughs) Next topic. So a rule that I would change. um, This is probably not going to be as popular because I think it's decent. And actually somebody said it in in the chat here. I would do away with the three batter minimum. Yep. I'm not a fan of that. I understand it. So I'm not going to say I don't get it. I understand it. But it makes a guy like Lucas Lutke not as fun to me. Because you can have guys, okay, a a Damaso Marte back in 09. Guys like that where you know he can get out a big lefty, but you don't want him facing a lot of righties in a row. And you don't have that strategic option anymore of doing of, of doing that as much. So that's one off the top of my head. I'm sure there'd be another one if I thought a little more. But that's one off the top of my head where um, I would look to do away with. I mean, Adam Ottavino went from being a borderline all-star to us literally giving him a, to our biggest rival because he was such an inconvenience because he couldn't just come in and face one righty. He had to go an entire inning. It's like a, a lefty is afraid of his big looping curveball. Right. I was I was about to say too. It's amazing what a um, what a difference a manager can make. <laughs> in, yeah. In a pitcher, yeah. right? Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> that Alex Cora. What a good manager. I agree. Fine man. Also. He is. Honorable. Wonderful guy. A real gentleman. Honest. A real gentleman. So does anybody else have any rule change? I think he or took Adam. mine, so. Oh, you know what I okay. think is the dumbest rule? What's and that? It's not, a, it's not a baseball rule. It's a, a rule that some women have. Um, hey, you can uh, have a threesome, but no cheating on me when I'm not in the room. That's where I draw the line. 
<laughs> that is disrespectful. If you're not doing it two feet from me, then hey, we we took a vow before God. You hear me? <laughs> it sounds like you're speaking from experience, Ryan. Right. right. No. This, I don't think has so. Has this happened? <laughs> no. It just always it never made any sense do to we, me when I heard do we people also, say, do we have a new like segment? A therapy session. Do we have a new segment here? <laughs> I promise you that's not what happened. Session, <laughs> sessions with Ryan. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's jump into what are we doing first? We want to talk trades first, or we want to talk about the first half and who needs to step up? Uh, well, first, maybe first or uh, let's trades because the trades could influence the yeah, first half. Yeah, like, let's do that. Let's do that. So um, here is a tweet that I want to share with you guys. And um, Austin, you might know more about these stats than I do because they're more analytic stuff. Um, but I think I know what tweet you're talking about. So the I'm one that we up. had, okay. yes, the one that we had in um in the chat today. I forgot who posted. I think it might have been Joe, I believe. But um, where would Gallo rank statistically if he was on the Yankees? And folks, the Yankees are very interested in Joey Gallo. He's one of the top guys they're looking at um to add to this team. Could play center field, left field. I'm sure you guys um on here watched my video earlier. But where he would rank, Austin, if you could pull that up and go over some of those stats with us. Um, yep, I got it. I know a few of them, but not all of them. But if you could take it over, you're good to go. Um, so do you have the tweet up on the screen? I don't have to read it verbatim. Yep. Okay. Uh, so this I just found weird. He's hitting 239 and has a 402 on base. It, well, he has. He has. He's leading the league. I think he's leading the league in walks by like 12 or 15. His. I looked at his walk percentage. It's 20.5 percent. Damn. Yep. That's. I, That's as high as I believe. Yeah. Um, and then weighted on base average, I think, is just like it. Uh, it, it just takes the the park factor out of it. Like it, okay. it makes it a neutral thing. Is I could be wrong on that, but I know that's what they do with like weighted runs created plus. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm just kind of guessing there. And then expected is like it takes into. Um, like like bad luck like if you hit a ball hard right at somebody okay it, it would say or like it'll if you're they'll say like his exit velocity was this his launch angle was this the expectation is that he's going to have a 871 batting average with that but he gets out so that would that would factor in positively for him it's that's what i'm i'm pretty sure it is i'm i'm not 100% on either of those do not quote me on that so would that I, I would that basically would that be something where the shift would affect them probably yes okay yeah like if you hit one hard but the uh, second baseman catches it in shallow right field i would i would imagine that would affect them okay cuz i don't think it would take into account like positioning and i don't think that they've gotten that detailed with stuff um and then weighted runs created plus was also on there i just closed it out because i wasn't thinking um that definitely takes the the park factor out of it and i don't know is is uh the new rangers ballpark a, a hitter friendly park or have we not really yes. had a, enough of a sample for that yet i think it is i think it's pretty short it is, it is. yeah not pretty small gaps, I think. He would be first in defensive run saved, which this team has one good or okay, three good defenders, if we're being honest. Geo, DJ, and Judge. Yes. Uh, I'll, so he I'll take any that. defense that I can get. Yeah, I talked about that today in a video. I think people I think um so so that's basically everything there. So basically what it's saying is that he would lead a lot of these stats. Um, over to current Yankees because a lot of the talk about Joey Gallo, right, is, oh, you know, he's more of the same and we don't need the strikeout or nothing guy. Well, if you if you dig into Gallo's numbers a little more, you also got to remember there's two sides of the ball. We've seen some horrible outfield defense on the Yankees. Horrible outfield defense. Gallo would automatically, him and Judge, I think, are arguably for guys that are big like they are, Arguably the two best defensive outfielders in baseball. They're up there. There's no doubt about it. I think they're both excellent. Um, Gallo got a rocket for an arm. He would definitely improve the outfield defense. 
And one of the things that we talked about even last time is those old Yankee clubs would work the hell out of pitchers. They've gotten away from that. They've really gotten away from that. And Gallo in the middle of a Judge and a Stanton, I think, makes a lot of sense. Now, am I saying he's the best pick for the Yankees? I still don't think so. I don't think so personally. Would I be upset if the Yankees gave up, as we talked about before we went live, a Kevin Alcantara, who's a young outfielder, who probably maybe never plays for the Yankees, maybe never goes too far, maybe a Davey Garcia and another guy. If that's the type of deal it takes, hell yeah, give me him. Give me him. I'll throw him out there. No problem. We got him all next year. The hell with it. You know your defense is covered. You know he's going to walk. You know he's going to see pitches. You know he's going to pop a homer every now and then. The people that are very against it, to me, it's it's kind of strange. It's like it's like we're taking on a another huge contract, and it doesn't make sense. So I, I don't see that with a guy like Gallon. I don't think it's going to take as much as people expect it to also. So I'm for it. I'm for it. I'm okay with it. No, I, I, go ahead. Go ahead, Arby. No, I agree with you as well. Like, like with UP, I agree. Um, he's not, he wouldn't be my first choice, but then again, I wouldn't be upset with if we had Gallo. If we had to give up a deal, like you, like you said, like a David Garcia, Cantera, that type of deal. But also remember this: he also plays first base and third base. Right. So let's say Luke Voigt needs a day of rest or Geo. You, you're not depleting the offense, the lineup as much as if you were to bring up Tyler Way, you know. So you still have a, a lethal lineup with Gallo not playing off but at least one of the corners infield position. And um, he's actually, uh, I was look, I'm looking at his um, batter ratios for this season. Mm-hmm. He's actually improved a lot on his um, walks and strikeout. He cut his strikeout percentage in half, in half. He's at 30.8%. Yeah, and, uh, Arby, real quick, let me let me that... let me throw something out there real quick since you you're talking about that. Um, because if I if I don't talk about it now, I'm probably gonna forget it. Since the crackdown, did you guys hear about this? Since the crackdown on the spider attack stuff, he's one of the best hitters in baseball in that time span, and he's walked more than he struck out. Yep. So Arby, take you can take it over now. I think he's also leading the league in homer since then, or him and Otani. Um, but his numbers yeah. are way different since the spider. Yeah, it improved dramatically. Yeah, after that whole spider attack. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, um, he cut his strikeout percentage in half, thirty point eight, and his home run percentage six point eight, which is his second best. But um, but yeah, I I would not mind Gallo as well, at all. Like he would improve dramatically, especially on the outfield. Uh, like I threw a tweet out there saying like a judge Gallo. If he was to bring up Floreal to give him a shot to see, that's a good uh, um, outfield depth. Or even Ambergy, even though he's not on the 40 man. But um, I would not be opposed to that. So, Pete, let me. Uh, well, two things. One, I agree with you that I wouldn't mind Gallo, but I want to see another move with it. I want to see someone. We talk about Adam Frazier all the time. It doesn't have to be him, but I want to see someone who also puts the ball in play. Yeah. Like, I think I think that there's there's a fine line there because I believe the major league um, average in strikeouts or strikeout percentage this year is about 25%. I think Judge is right below that at 24. Gallo is 31. Yeah. So it could be worse, I guess, is what I'm getting at. It, it's not ideal, obviously, but I, I want to see something to kind of balance that out a little bit there are too many strikeouts in this lineup. Um, I feel like he's more of a move that a, a team like the Red Sox, who puts the ball in play, makes, or, or Houston, as much as I hate to give them credit. San Diego. Um, yep, San Diego. Um, but earlier I, I asked you, and I just want to make sure that I was right on this. Did you say their plan, if they got him, would be for center field? Yes. Per, per what I was any- told today, they will like him in center field. Is anyone concerned that he's played a grand total of one inning there in his major league career? Or, or no, I'm sorry. He played one inning there in 2020. He hasn't played more. It looks like he's played about 500 innings out there. Well, that's the same thing, too, per my understanding, <sighs> is if they went if they went and got Frazier, Frazier would also end up in the outfield. And that's, okay. even, that's concerning, too, because he's not a really good outfielder. He played the least amount of um, games in center field, Adam Frazier, 55. Yeah, he's played center field. I know he's played left and right. Um, but I think I think the thing with Gallo is 
based off all, and again, I'm, I'm l- trying to learn a little more about analytics and whatnot, but everything I've read about him defensively is that the amount of range he covers, there's undeniably he could play center field. Per, per what the people I speak to and ask about, things like that, they feel undeniably he could be a center fielder for him. Now, again, he could get signed and play left still. I mean, there's, there's yeah. options there, but my understanding is they, they would be more than comfortable putting him in center field. Fair enough. Ryan, uh, what's your thoughts on him? I just, I got, I, I've been in PTSD for the last 30 seconds because I, I heard the phrase Frazier in the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> I was having flashbacks of watching fastballs be taken right down the middle for strike three. And, oh, okay, I'm back. I'm back. Well, now I'm having flashbacks to, uh, I think it was a Yankee Red Sox game. He was playing right field maybe two, three years ago. And he botched like three balls in one inning. Yep. It was Sunday night baseball. Yep. We should have swept that series and he couldn't catch a fly ball. And then couldn't feel the ground ball. Yes. Yep. Anyway, now I'm having PTSD. <laughs> In all seriousness, <laughs> though, I, I don't think he has vertigo. I, I You don't go on the 10-day IL for vertigo, so I, I hope that he's he's okay. Nah. Uh, I don't want to be taking cheap shots at him, but that, that I, that's a little scary as a person. I, I, I almost feel like it's like what I told you guys. It, it's them giving him a break. You think? Yeah. I believe that. I'm sorry. They've done it before. Teams have done that before. I, I don't think they want that's to fair. set him down because they're worried about – you know, not having any options. What do you do with him from there? What does another team do with him? I think they're maybe trying to look out for him a little bit and give him a break that, you know, they can kind of just say, well, he's suffering with this. We can leave him there as long as he wants. That That's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. He's, at, that, the same, he's, at, the, he's at the same training facility as Ellsbury. <laughs> <laughs> they're working out together currently. Just playing with cushioned blocks. All right. <laughs> take your time. We don't want to re-injure you. Go ahead. <laughs> Slowly. Square goes in the square. Uh, okay. You, you go rest. You tackle that later on in the afternoon. Ryan, what, what's your well, thoughts on Gallo? I thought you said Gallo. <laughs> Anywho. It wasn't Gallo. Gallo. That's a quick reference to my, co- my cousin Vinny, if you guys never saw the movie. Great movie. I would... I would be on board with adding him at this point just because it feels like we're just not scoring runs. And I don't I don't know. It feels like he, he makes the most sense of what's available right now. And you can't just – I mean, I am so sick of seeing Gardner pop up on my phone when I see a starting lineup. I can't take it anymore. Here's some, here's some Gallo take... highlights for you guys while you think about Brett Gardner. <laughs> Who would you rather, Gardner or LeCastro? At okay, this the point, Castro. The Castro, yeah. It, it's funny, you know, I was talking to Pops the other day, man, and, and Pops was hot about about Gardner, man. He's a, you know, Pops is an old school guy. He likes the guy that hustles hard and all that, and that's understandable. You got to respect Gardy for that, but let me ask you guys this, right? At some point, don't you recognize you're hurting the team? And don't you take that matter into your own hands? You would assume that. Right? That's what do you what want I... him to do? Plunge a sword into his stomach? No, retire. <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, what is it called? Hari Kuri or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Right there, right there in center field. That's it. But that um, would be no, great I, if he just Jay Bruce himself. I mean, and you just you, excuse himself from the team. I'm not even trying to be an ass. Like at at some point, you kind of think that you might do that, right? You, I mean, I know you got a contract, so it's like you know, I want my money, and you know, I understand that. But doesn't that at some point you're like, yeah, I'm not the same guy anymore. I'm only hurting this team. Like they could have one of these other young kids up here, like I was at one point. And just stop and give it up and take matters into your own hands. I wonder if Gardner invested his money poorly and now he has to just keep coming back. <laughs> He's going to have to keep playing for years. <laughs> yeah. Like when you like when you see an old comedian that's way past their prime just doing clubs. Yes. Like, yes. It's, this weekend, soupy sales. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know he did comedy. Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, There's the somebody DH from the, SNL. DH in the National League, Gardner's going to bulk up in the offseason. That would be hysterical if he just went to um, Cincinnati. He did his 30, 35, 35 home homers. runs. Well, he's got a PED suspension coming. Don't forget, maybe that's what he's waiting for. Oh, God. That, that's <laughs> oh, been that coming be for great. how many months? How many months has that been coming now? What are we on, like month eight? 
I think it was it was before opening day for sure. It was definitely before opening day, so yeah, I, I don't I don't see well, that one coming. Well, they're not working. He needs to go <laughs> take more. <laughs> um, quick thing too from Anthony. Anthony, thank you. Um, he just said in the comments, if the Yankees were to somehow trade for Gallo, um, he would be at least, he would bring at least balance to the right-handed heavy lineup. He's not the answer, but he's a start. I think that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, I think that's a, a, I think that's a fair way of looking at it. Oh, Ryan, right, by the way, now that you're on here, I've been meaning to yes. tell you this. You you were right. You got me. You were better than me on this one. Do you remember um, early on when we were talking during the offseason about the team coming up, You, I think, I'm pretty sure you said you thought the lineup right-handed was a problem. And I was like, no, I think it's fine because they hit the ball all over the place. Um, no, actually, no, that wasn't me. I, I was, I had more, I had more faith in this lineup. I was pretty shocked at how bad they've been. You weren't, I didn't have you weren't faith. concerned about the balance. I thought you were concerned about the balance. The, the no, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I was concerned about that. I was right about. I did not have any faith that Corey Kluber was going to stay healthy. That's right. the one I got right. Right. Okay. Okay. I feel like I mean, somebody, I should have just I know lied people in the and chat said that I did that. say that. I know people in the chat told me that a lot. A lot of people, I, and I'll give them credit then. They were in the chat saying that the lefty righty balance is going to hurt them having all righties, um, but Gallo does. I think bring I made a little fun of people balance. who said that. You probably called did. them Mike Francesa and called them Mike Francesa. <laughs> Good old Francesa. Um, oh yeah, don't, don't get another right-handed batter that's really good. Go get a left. Go get a twelve-year-old girl because she hits left-handed. Who cares? <laughs> we just need diversity in left-handed and right-handed. Who cares if they're actually any good? You know, it's and I no, guess no Stanton, you're not playing today. <laughs> we found a guy in a wheelchair who hits left-handed, and that makes more sense <laughs> because it's left-handed, and that's as far as we need to think. I guess I guess one of the things too that hurts the Yankees is that <clears throat> guys like Voigt have been hurt or underperforming. Um, you know, and, and to start the year, yeah, they, they still had um Hicks in there, but man, Hicks is about as useful as a bag of dirt. Um I think a bag of dirt might actually be more useful than Aaron Hicks right now. It would, yeah. Um but LeMay, LeMay honestly is underachieved this year. I mean, compared to his first two years in New York. He has, but if you look at at least he's turned it on now. So it's not too yes. late. Because I think his last 30 games sent like 315 with the Yankees. So he's he's definitely turned it on. Um, and, and he's a guy that I'm sure we'll get into of guys that need to really perform um, in the second half. But now that you said that, I actually want to see where DJ LeMayu is at over his last 30. Uh, let's see. Over his last 30. Yeah, he's hitting 288. His last 15, 305. So he's basically doing back to almost where he was. I still don't think he's the same guy, but he, he's getting there. And it's good just to see him putting the bat on the ball. And he's definitely hitting the ball harder recently. But um, other guys that are out there, I, I know one of the big names that I, I've also heard, um, the top two hitters I hear about the Yankees being interested in, is um, Adam Frazier and Gallo. Does everybody feel... If the Yankees were to get either one of those guys, is Frazier the better option for this current club? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I'd be on board with that. Okay, so I, I throw this wrench out there to you guys then. If he's playing left field only, or center field maybe even, because I know Francis was like, hell, if you get him, just the hell with it, throw him in center field. And I'm kind of okay with that too because they need the offense. But overall... Is that a better fit for the Yankees with this current team? Yeah. When you know, what, yes. but one thing, but one thing, and you guys know how big I am on Adam Frazier, but one thing about Gallo that you got to remember, he automatically makes the defense in the outfield better. That's guaranteed. I don't think Frazier does that. So is the no. bat of Frazier so much more valuable to the Yankees than it would be to Gallo? It's an interesting take because you know you're getting you're, you know you're getting a guy that gets on base with Gallo, right? You know you're going to get homers, and you know you're going to get defense. You're trading that away for more strikeouts, yes, and that's really it, right? Am I am I missing some? You're, you're you're just and you're getting the lefty. You're missing on the strikeouts. Yeah, that's the only thing with Gallo is just striking out too much compared to Adam Frazier barely striking strikes out. And the thing I'll, is with this team, we I was, I was just going to say Arby. I'll say what you say. Just get both of them right. 
Exactly. Why the not? Thing is, we, you could. And the thing is, we we suck with runners in scoring position. We that I think we're in the bottom. Well, Adam Frazier, that, that he will literally upgrade that. Like that will be our, that will be an issue. I guarantee you, we have Gallo. He's he's gonna have a little slump where he's like over twenty. Next thing you know, everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, why did we trade for Gallo instead of for Frazier?" That's gonna happen. Oh, of course. No doubt. No doubt. Exactly. So with Frazier, he puts the ball in play. I call him Baby DJ Lemayhu. You put DJ lead off second. Adam Adam Frazier changes the lineup completely, and we have a guy that puts the ball in play and can bring in runs. Yeah. And the scary so thing with a guy like Frazier, Frazier's not slowing down throughout the year. He's just getting better month after month. His last exactly. 30 games, 324. His last 15 games hitting 357. I think he leads the league in hits this year, 115. I'm pretty sure. I know. I think he actually I'm leads sure. in doubles, too, I feel like. So, Wait, so yeah, what, what's a double? I, I haven't seen the Yankees hit one of those in a while. <laughs> they, don't, they don't do many of those. No. They don't, they don't do many of those at all. So, I know what a double play is, though. Oh, we know that. Yeah, we're, we're very yeah. familiar with that. It's it very out. similar. To, it's very similar to the beginning of extra innings. Only you earned it. <laughs> you actually hit the right. ball and then run so fast to second base that they can't get the ball in fast enough. Manfred, yeah. Manfred's is just screw the Yankees and make it actually instead of a runner on second, a runner on first, and just hit in the double plays. <laughs> <laughs> they could start every inning like that. It doesn't even have to be extra the innings. Just in the double plays. Um, so, so let me put this to your point, Pete. Um, about whether you'd, you'd have Gallo or Frazier, because we would, all, I think we would all agree that this offense was pretty bad last year too. Like this isn't a, oh, yeah, a one-year thing, right? So there was a player on this team who has hardly played this year, who hit what I think the slugging percentage wouldn't quite be Gallo's, but he hit 225 with a 379 on base. Which, if you get Gallo and you you said sign me up for 225 and 380 with pop a lot of people are probably going to say okay i'll take it yeah of course that player was aaron hicks oh <laughs> punch me in the, punch me in the balls <laughs> <laughs> my god wait what year was that that was last year that was 2020 in 211 plate appearances aaron he played hicks. a lot he played a lot better when everyone got healthy and he could hit third between judge and stanton when he was hitting lead off, because Lemay was hurt, he was Wait, terrible. But, but, but what he... was his slugging here, though? What was so, his slugging uh, percentage? I, I I did say that that was was bad. His slugging was four fourteen. Yeah. So. But it's still an OPS of seven ninety three, which is well above the average. Yeah. Okay. But but I guess what I what I'm trying to say there is, <clears throat> if if Gallo had those numbers, I'm more than certain that slugging is up a lot more. Correct. I just. I don't know how much of a diff if that slugging makes enough of a difference. Right. So you're almost saying or, it's 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 almost having it's, Hicks healthy and and back in the lineup. It's almost It'll having almost Hick, be that. Hicks healthy with more pop and more strikeouts and a better defender. Yeah. Yeah. Because Hicks has Good lost take. a step. Good I, take. I honestly I didn't have that prepared. I was just curious. Um, and for reference, right now, Gallo's slugging is at 522. Mm, so good take. Higher, That's a good take, because I... It's not give, insignificant, but... I give Hicks a lot of shit, but... I... What if we had... What if we went out and got ourselves, like, a young, power-hitting, left-handed center fielder that's really fast? Like, maybe... Maybe, maybe we traded for him. Uh, from some team in our own farm system. Like, what if we had a player like that <laughs> that was just sitting in minor leagues dying Ryan, while I have we been, were getting no production from our outfield? Ryan, what if I've been on it, like man. I, I've been talking about <laughs> it till I'm blue in the face, and I, 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 to this day, I don't understand it. I will get, I will say something about Florio, though. Um, the last couple of games, he's not been hitting at all in AAA. And Trey Ambergy also, he homered today, but his average is almost down to 300 now. So, and honestly, oh, probably... Horrible. I, I, I was about to say, I'm like, but not even that. I'm, I'm probably like, they probably at this point are just like, we're never getting called up. Like, I'm kind of, my, my GM thinks we suck. We're not difference makers. So, I mean, damn, why even try anymore? I mean, if they're not going to hit, they'd fit right in. Yeah. So, I, I don't That's understand. Fair. That's a great point. The team That's chemistry a great point. would be so good. 
That's a great like, point. Like, I, I suck and Garner would be like, I suck. And they'd high five. <laughs> <laughs> then they skip off as music is playing. I think chemistry. I'll go for a walk now. Da, da, da. <laughs> Team chemistry. Wait, was that around. the ice cream truck? Right. <laughs> but it um, would be like that Spider-Man thing. They point at each other. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, no, but you guys are all right. I mean, I mean, Florio's there. They haven't given him a shot. Now it'll be interesting to see after the deadline if they do look to make changes because. I think the big holdup still is, and, and I talked about that in the video I made of Gallo today, is that you still hear a lot that the Yankees don't want to go over. And that's why when people were like, what about Kyle Gibson? I'm like, mm, they're not taking that salary. I don't see them doing that. Mm-mm. Not for a starter, which, to be fair, and we'll get to, to some of the starters like a Jameson Tyone and guys like that, they're starting to look better. So Tyone has gone on two, pit, two, two games in a row now where he looks a lot better. He looks a lot better. So pitching may not be the number one concern for them right now. Now, am I against like a Berrios deal? Of course not. I would love to see them add a guy like that or another starter in general. But um, I think they have pitching where they could get by. Um, Glenn Otto has just been promoted to AAA. Um, I like Mike King. I, I like um, Herman. I think can still get it going to a degree. Glenn Otto got really good stuff that if they give him a shot, they might. They're kind of, I believe they're going to trade him. That's just me. I think they end up trading Glenn Otto, and it's probably going to end up being one of these stupid things that Cashman does, and he's going to go to a club and be a decent pitcher. But um, but we'll see on that one. But I think offense got to be the move, right? I think offense, they have to look at the offense and, and make some changes. A-Rod says radical changes. So I think he's talking about you got to go out there with, like what we've been saying, an open mind. And blow some of this stuff up. Make a move that you never thought you would make at the deadline. They're not going to trade Voight. I think it makes a lot of sense right now. You know, people yeah. may say, well, Pete, his value's low. You don't got a place for him, really, unfortunately. He opens up a lot if you I trade mean, Voight. It's like I, if you trade him and get Frazier, you just improved, you really improved your club. Yeah, now you have DJ at first, Adam at second. In defense, your your right side of your infield is excellent. Then you figure out what happens with Glaber in the offseason. Exactly. But do you guys agree with me that um you know it's it's more along the lines of looking for offense than than pitching at this point? If you get a pitcher, it needs to be someone with a control like a Barrios or um I still love Kyle Hendricks. Yeah. Or Castillo. Oh yeah. Yeah, or Castillo. Yeah, I'm hearing that Marquez isn't is getting traded. Yeah, apparently so, not going to yeah. move Marquez. It would look really bad if they did at this point anyway. <laughs> right. Ryan, what are your thoughts on – on? do you have an idea, anybody? Because you haven't been on these with us. Um, Anybody you would consider? Any any target that you like? Honestly, no. I'm, there's nobody that I'm like head over heels feeling. We should, I, I, there's – the moves you guys have talked about that I feel like would be good, but there's nobody who I'm like that would, but that would put us over the top. There's nobody I feel that way about right now. Am I crazy? Like, no. I feel like I, I feel like they're just like nice little things that could help a little, but there's no, there's no blockbuster trade deadline. move yeah, I see coming. There's no like big last piece of this puzzle. And that's the problem with the Yankees. See, if I was a Brewers fan, I'd be on it. Like, yeah, give me one more bat and we're good. You know, they have yeah. the setup. They have the roster construction. They got the pitch, and they got everything you really need. For the Yankees, I'm, I'm right there. I'm right there with Alex. I, I am. I, I think they need radical change, and the deadline's not going to do it. And I think that's what most people's belief is, is that whoever you get now at the deadline needs to be a part of your future because if you just gun it for this year, I'm still I'm, – I'm, I don't think it's happening. I mean, I, I don't think it's happening at all. So, um, yeah, that, that's my mindset. If I'm going into this deadline, that's the way I'm thinking. And, and I think maybe it was while we were alive. I don't know if it was, but Austin, you even said something about, um, uh, Peraza being dealt if they trade him. You got to get something that is going to stick around for a while. If you trade a chip like that, that's not something you give up for a gallo. I just think that's stupid. I'll trade Peraza for, for, and, and a lot more for Frazier in a heartbeat. Yeah, I mean, I but mean, I'm not doing it for Gallo. Yeah, because Frazier, you can see, you have many options with a guy like Frazier on where he improves your club, especially going forward. 
Um, Gallo, not really the same for the Yankees on, on, on how their team is set up and what they need to change. Um, but people, again, are in the comment section talking about a game changer for the Yankees would be um, Reynolds. Um, I'm here again not just happen. to say it's not going to happen. It's it's not going to happen. I can see why fans think it should. I can also see why the Pirates are like, no, no, well, unless we're blown away. And if that is an availability and Brian Cashman could ever make that happen, yeah, I think that is a, a legit game change. If you guys saw him, Judge robbed the double off of him in the All-Star game. Yep. He had that bomb the right field, a bullet. And that's what he does. He's a, he's a really good ball player. But, Ryan, I agree with you. I don't think there's like a um an A-plus target out there that you see and you're like, yeah, the Yankees can't miss here. I think the issue is they did not see how bad they were going to be coming. I think they fully expected all these players that we have to equal a very, very good lineup. Oh, yeah. And it's underachieved so drastically that it's like, ah, uh, what if we go kidnap Otani? How about that? Would that do something? <laughs> like, there's no, there's nothing you, you're going to do right now that's going to be like, oh, yeah, that would be a big. It's just like, uh, I don't know. It seems like these players we have should be pretty good. Yeah, the the underperformance, they obviously never expected that to happen. And, you know, even, I, I don't know, because I can't sit here and say, like, ah, eh, maybe, but because I wasn't, I thought it was going to be excellent. I thought the, the offense would not be an issue. I thought pitching would be the problem. Um, but with so many righties, I think now we're kind of seeing it. I just, my only hope is, is that guys like Brian Cashman and Fishman and all these people behind the scenes making these things up actually recognize that that's the issue here and they do need another contact bat um so i mean truth to be told soon right we'll find out we'll see what they do um um moving forward first I'll, i want to get to mr thompson's comment here he said i have no problem with frazier my only concern is that the yankees are going to end up acquiring him and then play him at a position that he hasn't played in some time or that it just won't make much sense um so, I mean, I can see that too, right? The Yankees have, have kind of done that before. That's what Yankee fans are, though, right now with the Yankees is they're just going to make moves and it's it's not going to work well. It's it's not going to be the best move possible or they'll get a guy who's performing well and then he's going to underperform here for whatever reason. Do you, but do you see the Yankees making more than one move? Let's say they get Gatto. They have to. Do you see to. them making another one? If they want to win, yes. They have to. If they're serious yeah, about winning. And, and it's funny, too, because – like we, we talked about earlier, right? They got what? The next 10 games are against the Red Sox and two against the Phillies. So eight games against the Boston Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox just swept this club. If the Yankees don't come out ready to play ball for real, for real, for real, I could see them drop way more than five games here. Yeah. Oh, and, the season on the line. Bones crew. Oh, Bones. God, please. I don't even want to hear it anymore. It's always on. The, <laughs> it was on the line when the season started with him at the helm. <laughs> Come on. But, no, they, they got a big, important series coming up now. I mean, these 10 games are huge. If this team's under 500, what do you buy for? See, in all seriousness, what would you buy I, for? I agree. Nothing. I mean, maybe, it, maybe if you're like, well, we can get Frazier for next year. Okay, maybe you consider that. But it's like what me and Francis have been talking about for a while is you got to, at that point, you have to retool. You got to hope that maybe Britain comes back healthy, you deal him. You hope that maybe you can find somebody that'll take on Chapman of all people. Maybe you, you relieve some salary and then you get some more prospects back. Maybe it's a like time you trade Glaber. Maybe a team will say, damn, if, you know, the potential of him is so high, maybe we'll throw a lot of prospects his way. I mean, there's a lot of options there, but for me, selling would be not even the worst case scenario for the Yankees. I know people will probably hear that and be like, damn, I want them to win. I'm not confident if this team even comes out doing well that they have a chance of winning anything. So if they play bad, I'm okay with them going out there and, and making a difference, making a change. Right. I agree as well. I'd rather them find a way, and it's easier said than done, to do, I want to say it was 2012 when the Red Sox traded – Lester and I forget who else, but they got um, Cespedes back, and yes, they that. they also added um, Alan Craig. Right. Then they go into the off season. They had some money freed up. They signed and didn't have a like a a brand name off season. I know they signed Stephen Drew that off season. I forget who else they got. They went on and won the World Series. Yeah. Yeah. 
Or and maybe we, no, it wasn't Alan Craig. He, I think he was on St. Louis that that series. I don't know. I could be wrong. Sorry, that was just. No, I know. Thought. I know what you're talking about. I definitely know yeah. what you're talking about. But um, yeah, the Yankees can do that again. But it goes back to the age old question: Is is Brian Cashman that guy? I know. Um, Ryan, I know you like Cash. Is uh, are you still confident I mean, in him making the right moves? I mean, I liked him at the beginning of this season. <laughs> what what are you supposed to do at this point? Like, oh, you know, everything's going good. No, it, everything went well for f- really seven, eight, nine, three years. We were pretty good. Last year, we got into the playoffs because everybody got into the playoffs, and we wound up playing well against Cleveland. This stinks. Like, this feels like 2013 through 2016, where you're just mm-hmm. like, hey, and you're just, and the ground ball the second. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't think I'm on the fire Cashman run, but this is not his year. But yeah, Boone's done after this, if there's not something miraculous. Any reality, what, any reality, though, that you guys see... Cashman going for obviously his last year of his contract, which is next year. Boone coming up on a new contract, and they let Boone go and keep Cashman. I think so. But does I think I've... so? So as an owner, though, here's my question on that, and and I just find it so odd is you'll have one year with a guy who's put this roster together and has to admit defeat at some point and be like, yeah, it didn't work out. You give him the year. Do you also give him the opportunity now? Because if you guys remember, I put a video out when I had a call that Hal Steinberg had nothing to do with who they hired. He didn't care. He had nothing to do with who the GM, who the owner, who the new manager was. Nothing whatsoever. Going forward, though, if that's the case, are you willing to be like, yeah, Cash, go do the same thing, get me a manager? Or at some point, does Steinberg just have to be like, I actually have to get involved in this because? I don't think he cares enough. I don't think he's a baseball guy enough to even worry about that. So I guess yeah, that's, that's, I that's the point I'm trying to make is if Cashman's going to be a one-year guy, you willing to have him be the guy who gets you another manager? It, I think I if Cash... Go ahead, Ryan. Go ahead. I think I don't if Cash... Think... <laughs> <laughs> you go. All right. I think if Cashman sticks around for a year, they're not going to fire Boone because... That's what I think, too. Then they would have to, if if they would fire Cash after this year or after next year, they would then possibly be firing another manager, and now you have three different managers in three years. That that's what I that that's my nightmare scenario. That's going to end up happening. That's yeah, the they, nightmare scenario that will end up happening. Arby, what do you think? No, I agree with um with Austin said because when Hal spoke in the in the press, it seemed like I'm giving Cashman one more chance because he has a year left. I'm bringing um, Boone as well. And like you said, Pete, that's a nightmare. Because, you know, it's, it's like what you're saying. Like, it, does Hal really care? Like, is he into this? Like, no, yeah, he doesn't. Whatever. He doesn't. So, exactly. So this is chaos. This is going downhill moving forward. And what what I mean by saying he doesn't care, I, I obviously believe there's care there to, to want the team to do good. He doesn't care enough about baseball in general to kind of put his two cents into it. Which which yeah, is which is concerning in a way because this is the time the Yankees really need an owner to step up, and you know people tell mm-hmm. me all it's all oh, well he said he's gonna go over everybody I speak to says don't be shocked if he doesn't go over at all I mean yeah. I wouldn't go over and I'm just that's just me if I'm paying two hundred and something million this team has shown me nothing to be like yeah I'm gonna put more cash into this club yeah, I, I don't mean? see the reason why I think the only way they get a guy like Gallo or Frazier is if they trade Britain. Yeah, they're gonna have to end up trading somebody. Also, that's the point that that's like somebody brought it to me about adding like a Gibson. Is I'm like, no, that definitely won't happen. But they're still gonna have to try to move some sort of salary to be able to make an addition to this club. Yeah, that's why I piggyback to what A Rod said. Like, if you wanna make improve this lineup, you're gonna have to make some radical changes, like trading Britain, Chapman, or even a Boy or a Glaber, something to shake it up. Yeah, definitely. It's too late to trade Ellsbury. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a time machine, I would do that and work so damn hard just to make a trade. Just to be like, I actually traded that contract. That's something to be proud of. But here's another question, though. Let's say Hal fires Cashman. Do we even trust Hal 
to for, to bring in another GM? GM? Um, I don't think he would do the hiring to be honest. I, I think it'd be I, Levine. I, yeah, I think it'd be Levine or um, uh, I could see I could see a guy like Damon Oppenheimer being involved a little bit and something like that. Do um, we trust any of those guys? Making a hire? I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think there got to be somebody else though. Um, th- th- that'll that'll have to do something. But you know, I'm willing to be. I'm not willing to to keep Boone anywhere near this club. I think there's a massive issue in the clubhouse. I, I've said it before. I'll keep saying it. They hired this guy to be a therapist, and I think they got a bad therapist at that. I, I'm being honest. I, I I hopefully I'll hopefully I can get information on that. But I don't believe this team is happy. I don't. No. I don't think they're happy no. with him as the manager. I really don't. People will say, "Oh, he's a nice guy, and the team loves him." No, they don't. No, they don't. You- if this team, if if they loved him, Garrett Cole doesn't do what he did Saturday night. First off, he wouldn't have had to, but he doesn't yeah, was, go out there and. I was and, shocked he even went out there to talk to him. What the hell's the point? Uh, there was no point. No, there was no all. chance of Garrett Cole coming out of that game. He could have been. He could have needed a crutch to pitch, and he would have pitched. No, definitely. There, he he, if he respected him at all, he's not coming out there and, or uh, I mean, Cole is not dropping that many f bombs and and all when he goes out there. I mean, Cole didn't even remember what he said. He was so fired up, and I get part of that's the adrenaline of the game, but still. Perry in the comments said Boone got bullied by Cole. <laughs> I think I tweeted that that night. Actually, Did you? <laughs> I think so. Oh man, I told you guys, man, and not to harp on the whole bully thing, but. If I'm the owner of a club, my manager ever said that they're gone the same day. I'm not even joking. Like people, for some, I, I'm, I guess maybe I'm still flabbergasted by the reaction that it got that nobody cared about that. Like maybe that's just the day and age and time that we're in now, where stuff like that's like somewhat okay. I just can't see a forty-something-year-old man on a damn baseball field being like an umpire bullied me. But anyway, importance of the first half. Who are important players for you guys going forward? Um, I will start. So I looked at a lot of different guys on the offensive side, right? Um, to be honest, I have one that might be a little surprising. Giancarlo Stanton. I think Stanton is really important to this club going forward. Let me tell you why. One, he needs to start hitting for more power. I don't think he's done that enough. I think he's hitting a lot of little singles the right field, and he's doing the right thing like that, but we need this guy to be that big power threat, that big bomber in the middle of the order. And two, gee, I need you in the outfield, man. I, I need you in the outfield. You just said, how long ago was it? Um, I'm working my way back to get there. Well, I, don't, I still don't know what the hell that means, to be honest. But his leg. We, uh, yeah, I guess his leg is injured <laughs> or they're concerned. I, I, I don't know what it is. But... We kind of need this dude in the outfield at some point this season, if there if there's going to be any possibility at all, for this club to do anything. Um, so that's my guy. My guy is Stanton. I think they need him to be who he's supposed to be. Um, he's not doing as bad. Don't get me wrong. As your Glaber Torres or your anybody, a lot of other guys on this club. I think Stanton needs to be Stanton, and that's really going to help the middle of this order, especially if they go out there and get a trade of a lefty bat. Maybe somebody could bat behind or in between. G is my guy. He is my guy that I want to step up on the offensive side. Um, whoever wants to go next after me, please go ahead. But I, I think um, I think Stanton's the guy for me. That's, for me, it will be Gla- um, Glaber. There you like go. From the beginning, big, big G, Glaber Torres on the screen for you. Like from the beginning of the season, I, I, I said all, all along, my player to watch for is Glaber Torres. Cause going based on what 2018 when he hit that magnificent season 38 homers you know and plus we all included the front office were were confident oh Glaber's our future shortstop that's what we did not resign Didi we let him walk we think that like, we got our future core player right here in Glaber and it has been uh, it has been terrible last season last season and this season he only has six home runs total in 119 games. Makes you really think about that season, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, was it really because of the juice balls only? And, um, yeah, he has to change it up because also he's literally damaging, destroying his lineup. Well, he's been better with the fifth, fifth hole. Yeah, well, mostly. I, I mean, that that's when the manager. Sixth, I think. I think Voight hits fifth. But yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, like he's bad at six. Now he's the kind of player that we kind of depended on, like to bring in runs, like to score and produce on offense. Yeah. And he hasn't been doing that. He's been <laughs> non-existent, and 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 on defense as well. The scariest so like thing, he, the scariest thing about Glaber, is that he makes no hard contact. He what is he like the lowest in the league? Slow. I believe That's so. Yeah. Terrifying, man. I know that has a lot to do with timing. But the Yankees haven't fixed them. That's scary. That's a scary stat because if you're looking at the highlights on the screen, the dude was hitting bullets everywhere. You know what I mean? He was hitting bullets. And, man, it's like now you don't you don't even see hard outs from this guy. As it's, like, the, well, it's funny because once I said that, the next clip is him hitting the bleeder to center field. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what A-Rod said. Um, I forgot when it was about Glaber, about the Yankees switching Glaber to short. Mm-hmm. He said that was a terrible decision for them. Because he's 24 years old, he's you don't switch a young player that he's a that he's normal or like a customer or better at second base. You don't switch him to shortstop. That that uh, changes you me- mentally. So he said that is all mental. He said if I was Cashman, whoever's in control, move him back to second base, leave him there, go find yourself a shortstop. But right. what they're doing is the Glaber is damaging him, hmm. which I agree. Even Cashman publicly said that he's not a, a, a good sure stop. He's better at second base. So he threw him under the bus. Makes you question his roster construction a little bit, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. So I just hope that Glaber in second half can change it up, can change it around, because we need him. I agree. I agree. I def- That's definitely a good pick from you. Austin, what do you think? Uh, do we have to do – are we doing one hit or one pitcher, or can I go pitching side here? You can do whatever you like, yeah. Uh, I, and, and you kind of touched on it earlier, Jamison Tyone. Um, if you, over his last seven games, these numbers aren't going to sound too great, but I have a caveat here. So his last seven games, he's 3-0 with a 4.63 ERA in 35 innings. He's given up 18 runs, struck out 31, walked nine. It's a 1.29 whip. But in that seven games is the game in Philly where he got one out and gave up four runs. Mm -hmm. In that time frame, he's faced Boston, Philly, Oakland, Kansas City, the Angels, the Mariners, and Houston. So he's faced three teams that are pretty much a lock for the playoffs right now. Um, And Seattle's ahead of us in the standings. And if you take out that one Philly start, his ERA over those seven games is 3.68. Mm. So I really hope he has turned a corner. I think he has. He looked a lot better in Houston, if memory serves. He just gave up two solo home runs, right? Yep. yep. Um, yep. Can't I can't remember who they were, too. But, uh, no, he, he looks a lot better. And it would how huge would it be if, if you get him – pitching like any even if he pitches to a mid three ERA the rest of the year this team should score more runs they should there's nothing in the last year and a half that should have me have faith in them but there's a lot more talent here and I'm hoping Voight gets gets healthy as and as he gets more at bats he heats up a little bit um to, to kind of carry this offense like he did when he first got over here, or maybe some of the deadline additions, if it's Gallo, Frazier, both, whatever. Um, getting time on the pitch at a 3-7 could be huge. Very big. I 100% you, you, agree with that. I mean, Garrett Cole turned it around uh, in Houston. I, I I think the spider attack questions can be put to bed. I, I, I hope so. I mean, that, was, that lineup had Altuve, Alvarez, um, I know they didn't have Bregman and Correa, but they had Gurriel, Brantley, some some really good hitters in that lineup. Yep. As much as we hate them, like I would take Brantley in a second. Oh yeah. On this team. Oh yeah. I would take Gurriel in a second on this team. Right. Hell, I would take Correa and Bregman in a second on this team. I'll take Altuve on this team. <laughs> I'd hate him so much, but I, I couldn't get myself to actually say that. Um. But yeah, I I don't know. Oh, and in in that as well was a five run outing against the Angels. So it was even lower than that. So so if you take that out, those which that's five starts where that ERA is just unbelievably good. I I can figure out what it would be if you want, but 
he, he really looks like he's turned a corner, which just could be huge for this team. Especially if Nestor can if Nestor can keep pitching any kind of decent, which I also don't have faith in, by the way. I'll be the first one to say that, and I hope that that the comes King back of New to York. bite me. The King of New York, Nestor oh, Cortez, gosh. lowest ERA in the city. I hope that comes back to bite me, but I have no faith in him. But if uh, if you get those guys and if Kluber can come back at any point, if Armand can, can turn a corner, Tyone, oh, and you got Savvy back. Yep. So Kluber, I think Kluber too. Kluber got a shot to come back also. Tyone could be could be the key to turning us around, assuming that they actually add something to this offense that helps us. Yep. I agree. I, I definitely agree. I think he's I think he's the, we talked about that too on the podcast that recently. Um I feel like he's the the pitcher to look at in the second half, undoubtedly the guy uh for the Yankees moving forward. They really, really need him to step up big time. Somebody in the comments said my pick is Aaron Boone. He really needs to step up and manage a good game. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think he knows how. No, I don't think yeah. so either. Ryan, really do you got don't. a pick for us? Um, I, I I know he is turning it around, but I think Dave, I think uh, DJ LeMahieu really needs to. I mean, <clears throat> that is a huge difference in this lineup. Is that he went from. I mean, he's starting to turn it around now, but he was basically hitting like 260 or 270 right. when he was leading the league in hitting last year and second in hitting the year before. That is an astronomical difference of having somebody who's constantly oh, constantly on base and, and then all of a sudden is just not the same guy. Yeah, definitely. Um, him Him returning to form or keeping what he's doing up going now – it is big for them moving forward. Uh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So, um, LeMay is definitely another guy. Um, Austin, did you have a hitter for us? I think Voight. Mm, yeah. I, I think I think the more pitches he sees, and we've seen Luke Voight carry this offense before. He did it right when he ca- got called up after the, he got brought over. He, If he gets hot, he can carry this offense. He led the league in home runs last year, and hopefully – I. I I didn't get to watch much of the Houston series. I don't know what he did there, but hopefully the Seattle series kind of got him going a little bit more on track. Uh, he's hitting 268 over his last 15 games, which is kind of about where you expect Luke Voigt to mm-hmm. be. Yep. 270, 280 hitter at best. Uh, the walks could be a little high, and the slugging percentage isn't where I expect it from him, but I think that'll come as he gets more timing down and uh, – Hopefully the guys around him start hitting because then you actually have to pitch to Luke Boyd. Yeah, and, I, that, I was... and and you're right. I mean, he makes a he makes a huge difference to the offense. Like you talk about carrying the team. I mean, he was the guy last year. I mean, the whole year, mm-hmm. the whole COVID season, he was the guy. I made the comment earlier, and I don't remember if it was with you guys or, or not, but that I think people underestimate how valuable a uh, healthy Luke Voigt actually is to this offense. Oh, no it doubt kind- about it. It, it reminds me of when um, Encarnacion left the Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, oh, well, he wasn't even the best hitter on the team. They still have Bautista, but it's just a different – it's just like when uh, Ortiz left the Red Sox. And I know he was a better hitter at, at the time, even right. though he was 40-whatever. But uh, it, it it's more the Encarnacion that, okay, he's not the best hitter on the team, but for whatever reason, that lineup is that much better with him in it. I think you could make a case for him being the MVP. Yeah. Even last year. Of course. I know definitely. I know DJ hit three, whatever, 36, or, or maybe that was even 2019. I think you can make a case of Luke Voigt's the most valuable hitter anyway. Yeah, he drove the runs in, right? I mean, he was the yeah. guy driving them in, so LeMay was getting no on and was driving them in. Yeah, nobody else was. How um, funny was Lindsay Adler's tweet last night when Judge oh, yeah, finally scored? Judge. She goes, um, Aaron Judge just experienced what it's like to score with a runner as a runner in scoring position. She, here, here's my only thing for her on that one. She should take that attitude into the conversations of asking questions. She won't. Fair. I mean, to me, that's fair, fair right? If you could throw a oh, jab like that now, fair. thank God, when you get in that room with them, ask a tough question every now and then. I mean, they're pretty easy to ask, especially with Boone's answers. The, oh, the, the follow-ups are very easy. Um, but oh, I yeah. did want to throw this out that I missed I missed a, a comment from somebody on here. Um, Yankees trade deadline prediction percentage on Gallo to New York. I'll still say maybe twenty five percent on Gallo to you, New York. 
Do you think Gallo or Frazier is a higher chance? Gallo. Right now, Gallo. Just just because, I, and that's just based off of what I've what I've been told. I've I've heard Frazier's name out there. The thing about Frazier, and I mentioned this today in my video that that fans got to remember is the Pirates know the Yankee system very very well. They know the Yankee system extremely well. So if there is a couple of guys there that they're like, we want to bring these guys in, I could see them striking a deal together very quickly. But I think Frazier's just going to be more of a hot commodity than Gallo is. And I think it's going to be a little tougher for the Yankees to acquire. To acquire. But I got somebody else, too, on the Yankees that I think neither needs to continue being the same guy. And that is the one, the only, Gary Sanchez. I think Gary, and maybe it's putting a little added pressure on him, but... He got on the really big hot streak, then he really tailed off again. Um, I think I, I forgot at one point he was like, um, what what was it, uh, five for fifty or something like that. He got into a really uh, struggling moment again, but he's picked it up this year. We know that he got an extremely hot streak, got everybody excited, but I think um, it's fair to say that we need Gary to maybe not be that same guy during that hot streak but still be a guy that's able to drive in runs. His defense has improved, definitely. Um, I think that's a fair take, right? I think Gary's definitely a guy we want to see continue to hit. I think he just needs to not hit third. Yeah, I think that that's definitely a, that's. I agree. I agree. I've said that for a while. Just because he gets hot, don't move him up. Take some of that pressure off him. Let him bat lower in the lineup a little bit um, and let him be who he is and, and, and see where that goes. Um, but I definitely believe um, he's a guy the Yankees really, really need to keep going. No doubt about it. They need this guy to hit. Um, no matter what the future looks like, if you're looking at this year, next year, whatever it is, they need Gary Sanchez to be that guy. So, actually, I thought of this the other day watching the game. What was the uh, the top three in the lineup when this offense actually looked respectable for a couple weeks earlier in the year? Wasn't it when... Stanton was batting ahead of Judge? Yep. Yep. What has Judge. Stanton not done in months? Batted in front of Judge. What? I mean, I know he got hurt, but what? what just because he got hurt, now he's back, he, he can't hit in front of Judge anymore? Is that why he got hurt? It's the nerds. It's the nerds send emails to Boone. Like, hey, Stanton's not batting second anymore. But meanwhile, Gary, who's two for his last 28, is batting third. Yeah. Because he had oh, a Gardner. streak. Gardner. Yep. Or Gardner, my God. Uh, Odor. God. Odor. Odor. So, actually, that's one thing that I've been meaning to bring up. I think Odor actually needs more playing time. And I can't believe I, I'm saying that. Really? Let me let me pull the stats up. Hang on. I thought I was the only one. Nope. He, oh, Arby, you're in the same boat as him I'm, on that one. Okay. I, I If you told me right now Rookie. that we're going to lose. Rookie. If you told me right now we're going to lose out a little bit on defense. But we're gonna help. We're gonna sit Glaber to help him figure it out. We're gonna put Rugi at second and DJ at third for a while. I I'm 100% for it. Has, has anyone else noticed how much Rugi's batting average has gone up lately? I haven't. No. He is over his last 30 games. He's hitting 258 with a 310 on base. Over his last 15, hitting 279 with a 340, and over his last seven, 278 with a 350. His slugging. Wow. In his last 30 games, is 484. Hmm. He has, in his last 30 games, five home runs, 10 RBIs. He struck out 32 times, which, whatever, this team, that's all they do is strike out. Um, but, yeah, I, I think Rugnado Dord needs more playing time. Interesting. I, I don't want him hitting third or fourth or fifth in the lineup. The only give me sixth or seventh. Okay. The only problem with that, do the Yankees admit that Glaber just can't keep playing? I think they do it as a. I think they did it with Branderson years ago when he started struggling against, like, really bad against lefties. They sat him down and they were like, "You're just going to work for five days or whatever." And if that fixes Glaber, great. And if it doesn't, then he needs to go to AAA. He needs to figure this out. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually really surprised that hasn't been on the table with Glaber. Just because the numbers are so bad. It's, you don't, there's, there's not a number out there that shows hope for Glaber this year. There's nothing no. out there. You can't find anything. Well, he's hitting the ball hard. No, he's not. He's not doing anything at all to make you say, 
you know, this guy's close to rebounding. And it's not like they don't have anybody that they could fill. Like you just said, you got Odor there. Geo showed he could actually play short. He he's he could actually play shortstop. Now, maybe they're concerned with the knee injury that you keep him there long enough, that's going to flare up. There's going to be a problem there. But you also got other options. You got guys that play shortstop and AAA that can come up. You know, you or got Roy you... Park tearing the cover off of the ball, and, and he doesn't get a shot. So you got options there. Or even though I was picking on Tyler Wade earlier tonight, if you have – Geo play short for seven innings. Yeah, then put in, yeah. put Wade at short. Move Geo to third. Put DJ at second. You got your best defensive infield. Yeah, they probably should do that with Glaber now, anyway. Oh, definitely, I agree. I agree, Ryan. Um, when it comes to when it comes to Glaber for you, I'm um, just because we're on that topic right now. It that's something that we haven't talked about a lot. He does have option. He could go down. At this point, I mean, where this team is. And the way he's hit, is that an option? I think, and it's shocking to obviously to say that about somebody who was an all-star in 2019, I think more likely you would see him get dealt than you would see him go down. Because I'm sure he's more likely to succeed somewhere else. He would. He might just not be able to handle New York. But can you give up on that talent while he still has options left? I don't think they will. I mean, I, look at how long I'm... they look at how long they gave Gary Sanchez. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Well, so... it's weird because when you watch Glaber, and this is why, like I, I, <laughs> I made a tweet the other day, and and somebody got I think got a little didn't understand where I was coming from. Like I was blaming the whole team for this. The Yankees released that thing talking about like positivity and stuff like that, and everybody's for positivity. Nobody, you know, discredits that. But I was bringing up the point that this is how they're coaching their actual players about baseball, not about life. They're coaching them about baseball this way. And some, the one guy was like, "Oh, you, but you can't say that's why the whole team sucks." I never said that. What I'm basically saying is, Marcus Timms is on record. The Yankees are trying to get rid of this 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 interview. You could, you know, that interview like tried to disappear from everything. Where he literally said, he sits down with Glaber and tells him that you're the best shortstop in the world. You're great. You gotta believe you're great. Like an an actual like a um, oh, what's the, what's those motivational speakers out there? Um, um, like one of these guys that like teaching you affirmation. Like you gotta say this every single second. You're the best. You're this. You're that. But then you watch his videos and you're like, uh, Marcus, you do see that his timing is completely off. Like, are you guys doing anything about this big foot? And then he's putting the foot down way before the pitch is there. And there's no hip drive in his swing. It's all arms. And you're like, is nobody seeing this? Nobody's witnessing this? You guys just keep telling this dude that he's okay? And that he's the best and we don't have nobody else? I've never understood why Glaber Torres has never gotten held accountable. Never. I think I said it on one of the first roundtables. He he hasn't played for a real manager, that's why. How come even even with like the media though like his his rookie year which was Miggy's rookie year as well, I want to say Glaber had more errors than Miggy. He did. But but he who did. got ripped? Who got ripped in the media? And Miggy. Miggy. Yeah. Who was by far the better hitter that year? Easily. He was our MVP two, that year. He hit two ninety seven with twenty seven homers. Yeah. Yeah. Glaber didn't do that. Nope. The, the media, the fan base, nobody has ever held him accountable in this organization. Pops thinks he and Pops I, thinks he's, he's terrible. And that, that's that's on my father's side. My father said that year you can't count that year for guys. The the no. the the the, the yeah. year when everybody's at home. Like he said, when but, Brett Gardner hits twenty seven homers, something was up. You knew something was wrong. And Glaber so just I, hasn't okay. been the same guy. So I wanted to touch on that. I, I looked it up on fan graphs. Just out of curiosity, the juice ball year we're, we're saying 2019, mm. correct? Mm. So his uh, they break it down into soft, medium, and hard percentage for contact. His soft contact that year was 14.9, medium 45.6, and hard was 39.5. Last year, the soft dropped to 13.9, which was an improvement, but the medium went up to 55.6, and the hard went to 30.6. Now that has even plummeted further. The soft is up to 15.1. The medium is up to 61.5, and his hard hit rate is 23.4. Wow. 
to Holy give crap. you. Do I still have Gallo up here? I want to pull Gallo up quick. Wow. That's being weird. Um. So Joey Gallo, since we've been talking about him, I had it nearby, and now I can't find it. Joey Gallo's hard hit rate this year is down from last year. And in, in 2019, it was 51.9%. Last year, it was 41.2. And this year, it's 40.5. Hmm. His soft contact rate is 14.3. Like, Glaber just, he, his hard contact rate goes down every year. That could also be then and league adjustment. That could also be league adjustment, too. It could be. I, I was willing to give him a, pa- a slight pass on the uh, the, tw- the drop from 2019 to 2020, but you're down now 16% from 2019 to 2021. That wow. still sounds like more than a league adjustment to me. It does. It does. He remind, <laughs> He's reminding me of – this guy didn't have the success, but just because I'm in the like Philly area and I hear all their – prospects get hyped up he is reminding me of dominic brown and it is scaring me a lot. wow yeah my my pops is on record man he told me the other day again he's like this guy he's just not good he's not gonna be good he's the guy he was in that, that year the juice ball you'll never see that again and that's what yeah. he believes i think he's gonna become a, a decent ball player i don't think this is the guy he's going to be i think he's better than this, this I, hope. I i really believe he's better than this I just don't feel he's a fit for the Yankees. I really don't. I, and it sucks because, you know, right now, you know, we talk about trading him, getting value for him. I know that, that, um, that trade site where you get, like, player value for that. They still have him pretty up there. Um, just because how many years of control he is and all that stuff factors in. But if I'm a club and, you know, the Yankees say he's available, I mean, how much am I willing to give up for him? Well, Dan Federico said, a while ago in the last round table that he's one of uh Glaber is one of the big trade assets, which I was shocked. Well, and and that's why. Point. Well that's why too, because he has that he has the control. He has um the potential. He got a lot of that stuff there. So he has a he has a, a decent I wouldn't even want to say he has a track record. I kinda of feel like he doesn't got one real year. Um but that is he's also gotten pretty better at shortstop I I wanna say as a defender. But um, there's definitely there's definitely more questions there um, than meets the eye. I just hope he really doesn't become like a Dominic Smith and just completely fizzles out. I hope that's not the case. That's why I piggyback what Ryan said. Word. Like, are we willing to risk waiting for the ho- to hope that he comes back, turn it around, or trade him? Probably he needs a, diff- a different scenery, which I I agree. I would trade him, even mm-hmm. though. Way back and way back in the uh, in the season, I was saying that you keep him, you don't trade him, you trade Voight instead. But now the way I'm seeing Glaber perform, I don't know. I think it's best, better safe to start to, to trade Glaber now and get as much as possible in return. I don't know. So the reason I I was always more willing to wait on Gary is just how hard it is to find a good catcher. That's right. That's right. I mean, you look at him now, he's probably – he's easily got to be in the top ten for catchers this year. Oh, easily. I, I'm, I'm doing that spitball. No, he, he, could, he might be in the top five. I was going to say, he could very well be in the top five. Yeah, he probably is. And, and he's, have, he's having a streaky year. But I look at this upcoming free agent class, and I see Carlos Correa, and I see Corey Seager, and I see Trevor Story. I see that Gio Urshela can play at third, or I mean, can play a short. Yep. Brandon Crawford. Why? Brandon Crawford, uh, Garrett Cole's brother-in-law. Yep. He's a gold glover over there having a great year. I mean, and he won't cost you much as far as what the other guys will cost you. Right. Actually, he could be the perfect stopgap for all the shortstop prospects they have coming up. I was up. just about to say that, yeah. That's why I've been harping on that for a while. It makes it makes a lot of sense for him. He could be perfect. You sign him to – how old is Crawford? Like 34? 34, yeah. I think 33, 34, 35, around there. Sign him to a two-, three-year deal. Buy you some time if the, there's injuries or you need to make a trade of, of say, a Peraza and 
you need to wait an extra year on Volpe and throw Crawford's lefty bat into the short porch, get cold glove defense. I mean, it, it's not as hard to replace a shortstop as it is a catcher. No, definitely not. And like you said, you got, God, how many options are out there? If, if there's ever a time to replace Glaber, it's, the time is coming, isn't it? Now. I mean, no, no. no doubt about it, the time is coming. So, I mean, um, the other thing, too, about him is, like you said before, I mean, you have options, but – and you mentioned those guys' names, but you also got the options in the minor leagues. So, Peraza yeah. isn't far away. Homered again today. Um, I put his numbers up a while. Um, I think Volpe might be the next guy I'm covering on Pinstripe Prospect Weekly, um, which would be tomorrow. Yeah. So he might be a guy I'm, I'm covering, but um, I don't know what the hell is going on in Ryan's house. <laughs> it's it's not me. I was, is this, I was about to say, is this, is this like paranormal activity? Front door open. <laughs> Back door open. <laughs> um, but we'll hey, see what you guys happens. Can, you guys can keep going. I'm, I think I got to leave here soon. Are all you right. guys going all night or? No, no, no. We got one more topic to cover. Um, that's okay. actually really interesting that I think everybody's going to like. And we talked about this today. I'm going to throw this tweet on the screen from somebody, and I want to get everybody's opinion on it. I love it. Um, I absolutely love this. This is from at FAL613RAVE, R-A-V. I'll give him credit on there. Um, Maybe it's time to break up the AL versus NL and do a U.S. or U.S. slash Canada versus the world. This is for the All-Star game. It will be fun to see teammates against each other. Guys, we talked about this. I love this idea. What do you guys think? I absolutely love this idea for the All-Star game. I love it as well. Like, ever since they removed the rule of the uh, home field advantage for the World Series, you know, it's becoming relevant. Like, I'd rather see this. This is more enticing and more interesting to see. For whatever reason, I think All-Star games and baseball is like the last one that's sort of an event. And even now, I don't think it is anymore. But all the other sports, it feels like there's some gimmick to get people to watch. Like, it's like, Michael Irvin's the coach of this team. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I, I, I love it. I love it. And we talked about – Austin, what do you think about it? I love that because I the only sport that does anything even remotely close is the NBA, which I, I don't want to get into how bad their, their game is. But I, I do like seeing um, – like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown go up against each other. Uh, like, that's cool. Yeah. I, I would love to see, um, and, and this Higgy would not make the all-star game, but I would love to see Higgy have to be in the box against Eric Cole. That would be <laughs> funny. That would be funny. I think that, would be awesome. that would be funny. So like, that would be, that would be awesome. And I, I know, how do you not like that? I know one of the things that we talked about was like the first assumption was even for me when we were talking about like what players, how the teams will look. The assumption was like, oh, yeah, the world team would dominate. But then you see the lineup and the pitching, and I'm like, I don't know about that. I think the U.S. still got it. So yeah. I did a quick lineup for the United States, and I know Francis did one for the world team, and I'll go over both of those real quick, and, and we'll wrap up on that. Catcher for USA would be Real Muto. First baseman, Freddie Freeman. Second baseman, DJ LeMayu. Third baseman, um, Nolan Arenado, shortstop Story, right field Judge, center field Trout, left field Betts, DH could be Bellinger or Yelich. Pitching, they got, it's just stupid. DeGrom, Cole, Scherzer, Bieber, Wheeler. Um, then if you look at the um, bullpen, you got Hayter, you got um, uh, Hand, Anderson, Pomerantz, Williams on Milwaukee. Tons of stuff there. On the world side, you got Xander at short, Tatis at second, Vladdy at first, Otani, DH, Acuna in outfield, Soto in outfield, Machado at third base, Jordan Alvarez in the outfield, and um, Sal Salvador Perez as a catcher. Um, makes a lot of sense, but then you see the rotation, Otani, Darvish, Marquez, Berrios, and Severino potentially. Those guys don't scare me. They don't scare me. No. But especially the lineup does. The lineup does, especially yes. With Especially with a, especially with Acuna in, in the outfield having to play on crutches, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fly ball and it's an inside the park home run. So, but overall, no, RB, you're right, man. The the lineup they have is filthy. But let me just Ooh. say this: How good is that lineup against a Degrom? Is it like every other team? That's I, my that's I, my I feel thing. Like it Probably, is. yeah. 
That's, I mean, that's it, my only thing there. And I'm not scared of Herman have, Marquez. I'm sorry. I'm not scared of Herman Marquez. Yeah. I don't get scared about that. The U.S. would have the two best pitchers on the planet. Yeah. Undi- I mean, going back, even if – and I guess the All-Star game, they wouldn't be able to make it a series. It wouldn't. I don't think they'll ever be able to do like a three-game series, but that would be awesome. That would be so awesome if they could do that. Um, I love that idea. So shout out to that man who who threw that on there. Um, give him a like or whatever or anything else you could do. Um, I just love that idea and I thought it was something fun to talk about. Um, better than a lot of the stuff that um that MLB's doing now. I think it's a, a, a awesome idea. Um, I don't know, man. I, I still think um I still think Team USA would have it. I think they would have it just because of the pitching alone. But that is a hell of an offense. You could see you could all see that world offense is dominating quickly. And they gotta pitch perfect. Oh, no doubt. And and luckily, luckily for them, though, they got the right guys to do it, don't they? <laughs> they, <laughs> they got the right guys to pitch perfectly if they need it. So that's the good thing. So would you rather do that or would you rather do an NBA style where you say, say pick, a, pick the all-star from, let's just say this year, the Dodgers and the Rays, and you say, okay, Cody Bellinger or Mookie Betts, you're the captain, and who was the Rays all-star this year? Oh, Mike Zunino, you're the captain. And now you guys are picking teams. Like you can pick someone from the NLAL. Would you? Would it matter to you? Would you have a preference either way? Well, I guess that's the kind of thing too that MLB probably wouldn't like because at that point, aren't you? At that point, you're basically taking away. Um, you're kind of taking away the fans from the aspect of the game, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know how much they will like that. Or what? Yeah. If, well, the. Wait, you're saying you don't know how much the fans would like the the world one? Well, no, or, no, or... I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if baseball would be happy with that. For an example, I mean, you could still let the fans vote on it and then be like, okay, Zunino and and Bess, here's your here's who you pick from. True. You could. It was just something that popped into my head since I mentioned the NBA. Yeah, that's true. Um, that makes sense. I, I don't know because it's not like you're going to necessarily have bragging rights that, Oh, team USA won. I I don't, I don't know that you're going to have bragging rights either way. So would that, would that make more sense? Would it 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 matter? Do you have a preference? No, no, I don't have a preference on that. I just want to see something a little different. Yeah. I I think, I think um, the ALNL thing is cute and all, but I, I think there's just something missing from it. And I like the idea I just like what that will look like because it is like, they, like, you know, they're, they're making a big deal about it being a world game. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. not, it's, it's, it's a world baseball game and it is, that's obvious. So with that being said, I would like to see the all-star festivities kind of show love back to all these different countries that are participating in baseball. I think that would be a cool thing. You know, you got a guy like Chapman out there with everything that's going on with Cuba right now, you know, having a Cuba thing on his hat. And I think it's just an, it's just another way to, um, to 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 show how important sport is to the world, especially baseball. Baseball is a very important game, especially for Latin America too. It's a very very important game for a lot of people. So, I I think that would just add a little something to to the All Star festivities. The only downside I think I could see with that is you might get on the world side some. I don't know if you would try to necessarily represent every country or or what, but you might have trouble filling a team especially when some pitchers back out because they pitched the Sunday before and yeah there's injuries like I think you could end up with with some guys that that don't deserve to be there and and shouldn't get called all stars that that makes that would be my concern that makes sense I I just thought of that now actually no that does make sense also um so with that being said I don't have anything else today I think we covered just about everything we wanted to cover it was an absolute wonderful Wonderful roundtable with all of us on it. The return of Ryan Beck, who um had to jump off. Um, but uh, do you guys have anything else you want to add? Just go Yanks and hope they figure it out. Yeah, big, yeah. big, big, big ten game series coming up, man. It could be it to me. This is the put up or shut up series, isn't it? I mean, eight against the Red Sox. If the Yankees ever get beat up by the Red Sox for eight games. I'm not not saying they go 0 and 8, but if they lose both series, they're both four game series. They lose both of those. That's it. Pack it in. Seriously, it's pack it in. It's the playoffs from here in. 100. percent Yeah. 100. percent Now it was the Houston series was the playoffs. You would think that, yeah. but by the way Boone manages, I don't. Mm. 
I, I, I don't feel that same way. It was, it's odd hearing sure. him say all this stuff and then seeing some of the moves made. You're like, what the hell's going on? But we'll see. So with that being said, everybody, thank you for joining. I appreciate it. We had a filled, packed room today. A lot of comments. Absolutely awesome. We will talk to you guys again very, very soon. Thank you, guys. Yeah.